We're not. Amen? Uh, amen. First uh, four or five chapters of Daniel is laying the foundation of what the rest of the book is. It, it is establishing that Daniel was who he said he was, and he represented the God of heaven. So before you can make it to Daniel chapter 6 and on, you have to understand the history of Daniel chapter 1 through 5. Amen. So we're going to land this morning in one of those instances where Day, or Daniel once again proves that he represents God. Amen. Uh, I, I, I want to take you back to a time when there was three major pr uh, powers in the world. There was the Assyrians, there was the Egyptians, and there was this little bitty king and country named Babylon. Amen? And that's kind of where we're hanging out right now. In Daniel chapter 3 and Daniel chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar begins to come upon the scene. He begins to come upon the uh, global uh, uh, system, and he begins to take over. And Daniel is in the center of this. Amen? Daniel chapter number 3 is about uh, Nebuchadnezzar's vision. You know Nebuchadnezzar had several visions throughout the book of Daniel, but here in chapter 3, he begins to have a vision, and that vision was of a great and uh, big tree, and that tree was very fruitful, and that tree was very green, and the Bible says that the tree at the base was mighty and large, and so it troubles Nebuchadnezzar as to what this vision means. Well, he goes to all the soothsayers, the musicians, all the people that he has, and then finally at the very end, like we always do, we ask, is there anybody can then tell us what God says about this? Well, that's Daniel chapter number 3, about the tree and the vision. And so now we're hitting in Daniel chapter number 4, and it sets up this uh, uh, play. It sets up a drama, if you will, and Daniel now has given uh, the vision or the interpretation of the vision to King Nebuchadnezzar. The vision is this, is that you, O King Nebuchadnezzar, are the mighty tree. And your empire will go out throughout all the land. You will go all the way from the Assyrians to the Egyptians. There will be no kingdom like your kingdom. There will be no one who is able to top that tree. You will stand for generations if, you serve the Most High God. Amen. Daniel says, You, O King, have been cho chosen by the God of heaven to execute His will upon Israel, uh, to execute punishment upon Israel, uh, to uh, guide and to form and fashion and forge Israel into a people that will worship God. Daniel says, O King, if you will just do those things, if you will, God will give you a kingdom that will last generations. Now we're in Daniel chapter number 4. I want to preach to you a message just a little bit this morning about every one of us, about how that uh, King Nebuchadnezzar said some things. You ever said some things that you wish you hadn't said? Amen. A long time ago, you know I'm, I'm hard of hearing. And a long time ago, my wife said, uh, stand up or shut up. And I thought she said, stand up. Amen. Amen. Uh, there's a few times in my life that I haven't heard it correctly. But I want to tell you that bad things happen when you don't hear from the authorities in your life. Amen. And I want to preach to you a message this morning about four things you never say to God. Now, I've set it up in Daniel 3. And in Daniel 4, uh, uh, Daniel gives the prophecy and tells the king Nebuchadnezzar, follow these things and your kingdom will be from generation to generation. Now we're going to pick up in Daniel chapter number 4 and verse 28. And I'm going to read just a few passages of Scripture. And I don't want you to judge Nebuchadnezzar too much. I don't want you to be down on King Nebuchadnezzar because I believe within the heart of every man, Nebuchadnezzar speaks for every one of us who does not listen and does not answer to the God of heaven. Amen? Now, I hope I've whet your appetite. I hope you've got your uh, Scripture open. Here we go. Daniel chapter number uh, 4, verse 28, the Bible says, And it came to pass unto the, upon the king Nebuchadnezzar, and at the end of all twelve months he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. And the Bible says the king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built? from the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty. 
While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou knowest the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. The same hour was this thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and he did eat grass as oxen. The Bible says in the verse 33, And his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagles' feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes into heaven, and my understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored Him that liveth forever. Whosoever dominion is an everlasting dominion, and whose kingdom is from generation unto generation. So I'm going to give you some things today that we should never say to God, but we say it all the time. Amen? I just want to kind of get in your lunchbox. I'm going to kind of open your mailbox. I'm going to kind of tell you about the human experience and let you understand that every one of us are just like Nebuchadnezzar. The Bible tells us in Isaiah that we all like sheep have gone astray. Amen? It is not that we don't know who God is. It's just that we don't listen to what God says. Amen? So many times we come to God and we put our fingers in God's uh, uh, face and we say, God, this is the way it's going to be. But God said, remember Nebuchadnezzar. Amen? Remember Nebuchadnezzar. Let me give you four things. Amen? What you should never say to God. Well, the first thing is pretty obvious by the text. Amen? Look what it says. The first thing is, I don't have time for you, God. I don't have time to uh, just be wasting my life, to be wasting my effort, to be wasting what precious time I've got to deal with you. I've got things going on in my world. Now, if you want to bless me, bless me. But if you're not going to bless me with my plan and my purpose and my path, then God, just get out of my life and leave me alone. I ain't got nothing to do with you unless you are going to put something in my back pocket or pat me on the back. Now, that's what Nebuchadnezzar says. In here in Daniel chapter number 4. Look with you, if you will, in verse number 30. I don't have time for you, God. Now, read it with me again. The king spake, verse 30, the king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon? Now you have to understand that the Assyrian Empire is crumbling. The Egyptian Empire with Ramesses and all their, uh, their great building and all their great orifices and all their great worship was decaying. There was rising up on the floor uh, in Babylon. In Mesopotamia, there was great city of Babylon. Structures and historians tell us all the time that there has never been a city built like the city of Babylon. The city of Babylon had walls 30 feet thick and 30 feet high. The city of Babylon had around it a moat. They had around it a river that run through it for fresh water. The city of Babylon, the Bible says of the ancient wonders of the world, the hanging gardens of Babylon, was beyond anything that was in the world at the time. There was all sorts of gold and glitter and all those things that man lift up and God see that Nebuchadnezzar didn't have time for God. Amen? He says, the king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that have built? Thank you, Miss Connie. Woo, look what I'm doing. Amen? I'm Donald Trump on steroids. I'm building better than Manhattan. I'm building better than the Taj Mahal. I'm building better than anything that God has ever made. I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have done it all. Amen? Now just go with me for a minute. Is that okay? Amen? His great-great-great-grandfather was some dude named Nimrod. This guy named Nimrod, who settled in Mesopotamian Valley that we know as Babylon, he was an arrogant fool. 
Um, Nimrod was the same as his great, great, great grandson, Nebuchadnezzar. And when he said, look what I have done. You see, he's the one you remember uh, that built the first cell phone tower. He was the one that built the highest empire and the highest uh, building in the day. We know it today as the Tower of Babel. And so Nebuchadnezzar has got it in his genes to tell God that he don't have time for him. That God is secondary to what Nebuchadnezzar wants to do. He said, is this not the great Babylon that I have built? Amen. I built a house of the kingdom. And he says, I didn't do it with anybody else's help. Look what he says. He says, but by the might of my own power. There's a lot of people today that are building empires. They are building little empires on their little piece of property. They're building great buildings. Amen. They're grill, building great uh, 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 legacies, or so they seem. And they put up all these structures, and they go into themselves, and they say, look what I have done. Look what I own. Look what I have accomplished. My friend, we need to understand that one thing you should never say to God is that I don't have time to recognize you. Amen? And, and there's a lot of people this morning that are just that way. Especially living in the day in which we live in what we call the horn of plenty in America. We don't want for anything. Amen? We got it all at our fingertips. We got Amazon. We got all these things that we can just click and it'll be at our doorstep. Uh, sometimes I think if I ordered something right now, the package would beat me to the house. Amen? Everything is cheap. Everything is disposable. Everything can come to me. I don't have to do anything. All I have to do is speak it and it happens. And my friend, that's the way that Nebuchadnezzar lived. Is He said, I don't have time for you, God. He said in verse number 30, I don't have time for you. Now I'm going to get real. You don't have time for Him either. Amen? If you're building a worldly empire, if you're looking for worldly power, if you're looking for the things of this world that brings you pleasure, you are saying to God, just like Nebuchadnezzar, I don't have time for you. I'm too busy to be bothered with you, God. I've got things going on. Well, I've got to work my job uh, six days a week. I've got to do this, and I've got to do that. Well, if there's any time left, God, I'll get around to giving it to you, but I'm just too busy to be bothered with what you would want me to have. Amen? I, I know Nebuchadnezzar knew. Amen? Seek you first the kingdom of God and all the other things. But no, Nebuchadnezzar said, I've got to build, and I ain't got time to be bothered by you. Amen? I, I want you to understand that every one of us, Every person in America has to fight the spirit of Nebuchadnezzar when we say that we are not have time for God. Amen. There's people right now that are all out there. Amen. They're all out there and they're chasing all these gods and all these things and they're building all this stuff upon the earth. But the Bible says very clearly, oh, you fool. Amen. You remember in Luke chapter number 15, amen, there was a rich man and there was a poor beggar that sat by his feet. And the poor beggar had nothing, but he was waiting for the table scraps to fall. And he was having the dogs lick his sores. And there was a man, the Bible says, that fared sumptuously. And he had a great place. And he had lots of power. And he had lots of privilege. But the Bible says, and that day, the rich man died. How much of it did he take with him? None. Amen. None of it. But yet, we, like the rich man and like Nebuchadnezzar, we chase after all the things of this world. Amen. I'm just going to get there. I know all preachers have, and I'm just going to get it out of the way. Amen. I'm so glad, Bryson, that you wore your tie today, buddy. Amen. Now, I'm, I'm off for Tennessee. I bleed orange. Amen. I do. Miss Connie, I, I was excited. My wife was telling me, she said, we need to go to bed. It's too late. No, no, let's go. I said, oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, right down there when, when old Bryce Young was right there and he could have got. And then all of a sudden they tried to kick that field goal and it went on. I said, oh, boy. 
I, I want you, I'm standing in front of the television. Me and my little bitty dog. And we're going, yo, go Tennessee. Rocky Top, I'll always be. And I'm getting up there. And then, oh, our Herndon Hooker, he backs up and he throws. And, oh, my goodness, he catches it, Miss Connie. He comes down. we got two seconds left. I'm excited. Don't laugh at me. You were excited, too. If I could play it back for you, I'd put Danny right up there on that screen right there. And he'd be with his orange pom-poms going, go Tennessee, go Tennessee. We all were, right? Man, that boy kicks that dying duck knuckleball, and I think, and the angels, I don't know how he got that thing through the upright, Josh. But that thing went through, and all of the state of Tennessee was going, Woo! We're the winners. We're the champions. We're the kings. Amen? Nebuchadnezzar. Let me say that to say this. How many of those 106,000 in Neyland Stadium, how many of the hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of thousands throughout all the national broadcast? how many of them thought enough to get up this morning and go and worship the true God? How many of them thought this morning as they woke up, Lord, that was just a game, but you're God. How many of them thought this morning to say, Lord, I am so blessed that you gave me breath in my body. My Facebook feed is like your Facebook feed. It lights up with all the goodness of Tennessee. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar. We don't have time for God because we're too busy to be bothered. And if we're too busy to be bothered, we're too blessed to be burdened down with having to serve God. Amen? It's a burden to serve God. Amen? David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to sit with the riches of the wicked. Amen? David said, it was a joy to be in God's presence. The world says it's a burden. And I appreciate the burden you put forth this morning. Amen? I mean, it's a burden uh, to have a place to worship. It's a burden to have gas in the tank to drive over here. It's a burden to have food to put on your family's table this morning that where you could eat your Cheerios or whatever it was you ate. It's a burden that you had to burn an hour and a half. That's what the world says. Why? It says simply because I'm too busy to be bothered with God and I am too blessed to be burdened with God. I, I've got so much going on, I don't have time for the God of heaven. I've got the God of everything else. And I've got to stay up on everything, because if you ever let your foot off the gas, you go back, right? Amen? We, we see it all the time. People running themselves into the grave after stuff. Amen? But yet we say it's a burden to serve God. That's what Nebuchadnezzar is saying. Nebuchadnezzar said, I don't have time for you, God. I've got too much uh, to do. I'm too busy to bother with you. I'm too blessed to be burdened with the responsibility of worshiping you. And I am too big to bow down to you. I'm a big shot, Miss Connie. You ain't going to believe this. Because it's a lie. I'm going to tell you up front, it's a lie. But everybody, everybody knows my name. When I walk in, they get up and let me have the front seats. Amen? Well, everybody knows me. Amen? I'm the best thing since buttered bread. And, and I've met some people that way. They think that they are God's gift to all of us, so they are just so big that they can't bow to anybody. Amen? I don't care whether it's kings. I don't care whether it's CEOs of companies. I don't care whether it's doctors. I don't care whether it's me and you. But we all get that air to say that we're too important to bow before God. And we just don't have time for it. Hey, amen. You know, back, back Miss Glenda, when, it was, when you were a little kid, nobody else had anything else to do. Bless y'all's heart. You didn't have nothing else to do to go to church. That I don't mind you going to church. But now you don't understand, sis. Now, amen, you lived in a slower pace back then. We're moving a million miles an hour. we got to get it done. We're going 
We're driving. We're, we're going faster and faster. We're catching another gear. We got our foot on the accelerator. And all the time it says bridge out. And we just keep boogity, boogity, boogity and on down the road of life. And then whenever we run through the barriers and go over the cliff, that's what Nebuchadnezzar was doing. Nebuchadnezzar was one who said, I do not have time for you, God. But look, it goes even further. God said, I don't have time for you. But look at the second thing He says. Second thing He says, and you already know, you're in verse number 31. Go there with me. Is I'm not going to listen or heed your truth. In verse 31, read it with me. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. I want to say to you guys that God is not going to sneak up on you. God is not going to pull something on you. God is not just going to lay it out and say, oh, by the way, the Bible says that God has given His Word that whosoever will can understand and know. The Bible says that the Word of God is from the establishment of the world. It says in the beginning, God created the world. In John chapter number 1, verse number 1, it says that the Word was made flesh. The Word was made flesh. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. In 2 Timothy chapter number 3, and verse number 16, it says that all Scripture is given that you can know. Amen? In 1 John chapter number 5, verse number 13, it says that God hath given us the Scriptures to where we can know that we have salvation. Amen? Psalms chapter number 12, verses 7 through 12 says that the Word of God is tried seven times, purer than silver. The Bible says that God spoke from Mount Sinai. The Bible says that God spoke from the bush. The Bible says that God speaks out of heaven. And I want to know that even in John chapter number 1, in verse 29, the Bible says that the Word of God spoke and that out of heaven it says, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. God ain't going to sneak it up on you. But there's a lot of people that won't heed the truth. While the Word was yet in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven. Amen. There's a lot of people today not listening to God. A lot of people in the world today. In fact, I would say the majority of everyone that you see do not listen at all to God. Amen. You know what they do? It, and it goes back. It goes back to the first thing. I don't have time for you, God. Amen. I, I, I don't have time for you. And if you don't have time for something, you don't pay attention to it. And if you don't pay attention to it, you know nothing about it. Amen? I, I asked a kid the other day as a, a young student nurse, and I asked her, I said, can you name any of the disciples? She said, yeah. There's Raphael, and there's, uh, 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 yeah. She started naming the Ninja Turtles. I'm like, oh my goodness, where do you go to church? And she told me, and I said, okay, thank you. <laughs> She just lights it, up, lights it up, man. You know, she starts naming the uh, the seven or the Ninja Turtles, and I'm like, "You're kidding." We live in a day to where people do not listen to God and God's truth. Now, I want to tell you, they'll listen to uh, celebrity preachers. Amen. They will. The Bible says that they will have an itching ear, heaping to themselves. Amen. Those who will tell them what they want to hear. Those who will stroke their egos, stroke their uh, imaginations, give them a prosperity that is not biblical, and they will heap themselves to that, and they will build huge cities. Churches who are cities. They have everything you need. But the Word of God. And so what's happening here in verse number 31 is that Nebuchadnezzar is one who did not heed the truth. Now, I go back, chapters 3 and 4, first part of 4, is that Daniel spent an entire year telling Nebuchadnezzar. An entire year from the greatest prophet 
the greatest one of the Old Testament. The Bible says that Daniel was a man who understood all things about God. And yet, as Daniel continued to tell Nebuchadnezzar over the months and over the days, he didn't hear a word of it because he was too busy for God and he did not heed the truth. You say, Pastor, how do you know? Look in verse number 29. In verse 29, it says that at the end of 12 months, Daniel spoke to Nebuchadnezzar for 12 months that you are, have been blessed by God. You are going to be the instrument that God uses to form and fashion Israel to worship Me. And if you will listen, you will be great from generation to generation. But yet, Nebuchadnezzar now in verse 31, hears nothing from God. You say, man, if, I, if I'd had Daniel teaching me for a whole year, I would have listened, Pastor. You've had me preaching to you for six years. <laughs> How much do you listen? Amen? How much do you listen to God? Amen? And, and yet, look, look in verse 31 again. It says this, There fell a voice from heaven. That voice is the Word of God. Jesus wants you to know His will. He wants you to know His way. He wants you to know what He wants to do in your life. But He is not going to talk to you through the world and the things of the world. And He's not going to get into the things of the world because the Bible says that He is above all things. I start to understand the Bible. Wait, let me tell you something. You understand as much of the Bible as you want to. Amen. Because the Bible says this. He says it's as simple for a child to understand. You say, Pastor, they use a lot of old words. Yeah. English. You don't know a word at, at school. Emmy, you go to school. You're still going to school, right? Em Emily, you don't know the name of a word. There used to be a thing, and I know you guys don't use They probably don't have them anymore. Called dictionaries. Now they have Google. You don't know the name of the word. You don't understand the word. You don't uh, look it up. Oh, you say, well, no, Pastor. I, I'm just going to buy me a newer version that homes it down for me. And we can be good buddies with God. Me and God, we, we buddies. We homies. And... That's the way it is. It's a take it or relieve it relationship. You know, God has been so watered down in the churches and in the homes and in the societies that everybody just knows enough about God that they don't want anything to do with God. And so when the word comes down, look what happens. Verse 31. I find my place. Verse 31. O Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. You know why the hammer's fallen on a lot of your stuff? It's because you didn't hear the word of God. And you didn't have time for God. Nebuchadnezzar is one that demonstrates to us a great effect in the fact that if we walk away from God, God is not going to chase us. Look what it says in Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way that seemeth right unto Nebuchadnezzar. Put your name there. Put my name there. There is a way that seemeth right unto Brian. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Scripture said in Jonah 1, 1, Jonah, that prophet that was called to preach to the Ninevites. Same city. Nineveh, Babylon, some region. There was a prophet named Jonah. You know the story. About the whale, Jonah goes to Jaffa, which is on the Mediterranean coast. And when he stands on the dock of Jaffa, to his right, God's direction was to go to Nineveh, which was about 500 miles. It would have took him 15 to 30 days sailing time to get there. And God said, I've got a message for you to take to Nineveh. Jonah says, 
I'm not listening. I ain't got time. Jonah looked up and he saw in Jaffa a ship that was going to Tarshish. Now get this. Tarshish was 2,500 miles to his left. It was near Spain, near the Straits of Gibraltar. It was some of the most wicked and most dangerous and most tumultuous part of the Mediterranean Sea. But guess what Jonah wanted to do? He wanted to do what Jonah wanted to do. And there's a lot of people and a lot of us, a lot of church members who are going to do what they're going to do and they're going to say, God, why did you do this to me? I mean, God's going to say, you didn't have time for me. You didn't have time for me. And you are not listening. You're not heeding my truth. And that's what happens. The Word of the Lord came unto Jonah. God spoke to Jonah. God speaks to you. Arise and go to Nineveh. But Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish. Look what it says in the last part. From the presence of the Lord, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was a God in his own eyes. And he didn't want to take time for God and he didn't want to listen to God. Now, what do you never say to God? Number one, I don't have time. Number two, I don't heed the truth. But what about number three? What's the third thing that you would never say to God, but we say it all the time? Look with me if you will. Is I don't honor your title. Amen? Uh, look what it says in verse 32. In verse 32, the Bible says, Daniel speaking, and they shall drive the and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know, get this, underline it, the whole emphasis of verse 32, things are going to happen bad until you realize the Most High ruleth the kingdom of men, and give it to whomsoever he will. I don't honor your title, God. I don't think you're in charge. God, you don't know what's best for me. You can know what's best for the pastor. You can know what's best for my wife or my husband. You can know what's best for my kids. But God don't be telling me what's best for me. Because I know what's best for me. I'm it. I got it figured out. I don't need a God to tell me what I'm doing and where I'm going. Because I am a God. That's what Nebuchadnezzar says. He says this to God. He said, I am the God. I'm it. I'm not listening to you. Now remember, amen, if you'll know Daniel 3, the very first part, you'll understand there was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And those three men stood up and they said, King, you're not God. We're not going to worship you. Do what you want to do, and we don't care, but we're not bowing down to you. Nebuchadnezzar gets hot under the collar. He grabs them, and the Bible says that they fired the furnace 17 times hotter than it had ever been fired. They took, bound these three men, and they took their soldiers, their best soldiers, and they couldn't get close enough without killing themselves to throw those three Hebrews in. Killed him like that. Nebuchadnezzar sitting upon his throne, his 90 foot golden image behind him, looking into the fiery furnace. And Nebuchadnezzar says, Did we not throw three men into the fiery furnace? In Daniel chapter 3, verse 25 through 27, his people said, Oh, yes, Lord, we throw three. And Nebuchadnezzar rises up off of his throne and looks. And he says, behold, I see four men. Four men walking unbound. And one of them is likened unto the Son of God. You would think that Nebuchadnezzar would get the message. That he would get the memo. 
That he would understand that God is who he said he was. And then he sends Daniel to interpret in, in chapter 3 and 4. He sends Daniel for a, a whole year to teach him and to uh, and influence him and all that. And now where are we right back to? Nebuchadnezzar is saying, God, you're not God. Every one of us, and I'm going to put myself in the same wagon, headed down the same hill. Every one of us has the tendency to put ourselves on the throne of our lives. Every one of us. Paul said it this way in the book of Romans. He said that we have flesh, and the flesh warth against the Spirit. What in the world would you never say to God is that, you, God, I don't believe that you're who you say you are. Psalms chapter number 19, verse number 1 says, The heavens and the earth declare the glory of the Lord. Amen. I, Colossians chapter number 2 says that everything was made by Him, for Him, and for His glory. You cannot look at the mountains and realize that Nebuchadnezzar built them. You cannot look at the ocean and see that Nebuchadnezzar kept the waters within their banks. You cannot look upon anything in this world and realize that you and I are keeping it and making it and doing it. While we are in charge of the sun, right? No. The Bible says that the heavens or the sun riseth and falleth according to the will of God. This little planet that we're on, it spins at a particular rate. It spins at a particular angle. And it is set in the heavens by the hand of God. And yet we say, God, I'm not going to honor who you say you are. I'm not going to do it. The Apostle Paul, who wrote the, one of the most intriguing books of the Bible, the book of Romans, he looks and he sees a society or a, a time when everybody was a God in their own sight. Romans chapter number 1, verse 21 says this, Because that when they knew God, that God had spoke to them, God had given them time, they glorified Him not as God. Neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. We live in a day of so much technology. We can split atoms. We can put together RNA or mRNA chains. We can make all these things. Well, I even heard the other day that they're, they're making uh, electric helicopters that is going to come get me at my house and take me to the Atlanta airport. I'll wait for Tony to get on it first. We don't need God, do we? We've got computers. We've got Bill Gates. We've got Elon Musk. We've got Anthony Fauci. What else do we... We don't need God. Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar says, I am not going to give you the recognition of your title, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I am not going to declare unto you. Now remember, he had already did it in Daniel 3, but he didn't mean it. Now here in Daniel 4, he's doing it again. Oh God, I don't believe you. What do you never say to God? Is that you don't say, I don't believe who you are. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but God. How much do you believe in God? Now, I'm going to get right here with you. Do you have Nebuchadnezzar's faith? Only when he can help you? Only when he can do something for you? Only to keep him from putting a hammer down on you? Is that how much faith you got in God? Or do you have the kind of faith that says, God, I don't have to know where I'm going. I just have to know who I'm going with. 
God, I don't have the power. Physically, financially, I don't have the power to do anything about this, but I know You do. I know, God, that You can raise the dead. I know, God, that You can multiply the fishes and the loaves. I know, God, that You can do all things. And I, by faith, trust You to do that. Do you have that faith? Or do you have Nebuchadnezzar's faith? Nebuchadnezzar's faith came into a frightful deal. Now look with me if you will. We're going to go a little bit further. I want you to look in verse number 32. God said, I'm going to put it on you. He says this in the middle of verse 32. And they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. I want to break this down just a minute. First of all, God says that you are going to be taken off your throne. And when you're taken off your throne, you're going to be put into a sense of craziness, lunacy, dementia. You are going to be crazy. Your craziness is going to be so bad that you are going to imitate the oxen of the field. You're going to eat grass. And the Bible says further down that you are going to grow claws like a beast. Your fingernails are going to get so long. Your hair is going to get so long and matted that you will look like one of the beasts. And then he says in verse 32, he gives us the timing. He says this in verse 32. He says, and this shall be for seven seasons or seven times. Seven years. Nebuchadnezzar didn't have time for God. Nebuchadnezzar didn't heed God's truth. And Nebuchadnezzar didn't honor God's title. So God had to put him on a shelf. God put him on the shelf. For seven years, the king Nebuchadnezzar, who was at the top of the world, is now eating the grass of the field. I've known people that way. They had everything going for them. Everything going right. But they would not give God time or honor. They would not give Him the uh, heed His truth. They did their own thing. And now they're out in the field as raving beasts. God said, don't say these things to me because you are going to face it. Last thing. I don't have time for you, God. I don't want to listen to you God everything you tell me goes against my spirit that's right it does I don't want to honor your title I'm not going to put you as God of my life God of heaven I'm not going to do that God I'm going to keep doing it my way because Nebuchadnezzar number four didn't believe that there would be any tribulation for his choices Nebuchadnezzar said I don't have any tribulation I'm it I am God look what he says Verse 33. The same hour was the king, this thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men, and he did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagles' feathers, and his nails like unto birds. If you're, if you're your God, say hi to Nebuchadnezzar on your way down. Say hi to Nebuchadnezzar on your way down. Nebuchadnezzar had built the city of Babylon and he had all these uh, different gods. The greatest god in the city of Babylon was Moloch. And Moloch was, a, again, it was a bull uh, a statue and they would give praise to Moloch. They would worship and give children to Moloch. Exodus 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. If I have to be honest with you and you have to be honest with me today, we've all got something that we keep taking God down and putting back up here. Some people, it's their job. 
Some people, it's their uh, boyfriend or their girlfriend or their husband or their wife. They take God down, they put that up there. Others of them is, a, is that social name. Everybody's got to know your name, the fame of the fame. So you put God down and you put that up there. Others, it's just a, 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 a sense that you are right and God is wrong, so you take God down and you put yourself up there. That guy you shave with, He's your God. I'm asking you today, are you guilty of saying these things to God? The answer is to each and every one of us. I want to say this clearly. Yes. Yes. We put other gods before the God. We do it all the time. And yet we say, just like Nebuchadnezzar, I don't have time, I don't hear, I don't heed, and I don't have any consequences for it. God says you do. Just like Nebuchadnezzar, we place God second to ourselves. Next slide. I want you to look at the next slide. In Hebrew, that is the Shama. The Shama was the emphasis of why that the Israelites, the Hebrews, were in Babylon to begin with. They had went and worshipped other gods. God had sent them prophet after prophet. He had sent them word after word, but yet they stiffened their necks and they would not turn. And God said, fine. Nebuchadnezzar carried them into Babylon in 586 B.C. God said to Nebuchadnezzar, I'm going to use you to forge them back to believing that I am the true God. The Shammah, that's it in Hebrew, but let me show it to you in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 6.4 says this. Every Hebrew right now says this every morning. They say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. You can't be in Jerusalem. You can't be in Israel without this being spoken every morning and every night. It was supposed to be a, an affirmation or to affirm that they understood that God was the God of heaven and God ruled over the things of the world. So I'm going to give you a chance to learn it too. God wants you to know that He and He alone is God. Proverbs 21.1 The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of the water. He turneth the heart of men whithersoever He will. God wants to turn your heart this morning. God wants to turn your heart this morning. They say, come get a song. I, wanna, I, I just want to be so, up front with you. This week, don't say these things. Now, I, I truly know that none of us would come right out and say it. That's blasphemous, isn't it? But we act it out through the week. We say, God, I, I've got time to work 60, 70 hours at work. Or I've got time to spend 12 hours sitting in a deer stand. Or 15 hours doing this. I've got time for those things. God, I don't have time for you. I don't have time for you. Hey, I'll, hey, hit me up. Hit me up on, uh, on Christmas. And I'll come and watch a kid's program as long as it doesn't go too long. I don't have time for you, God. I don't have time to study Your Word. I don't have time to pray. I don't have time. I'm not going to listen to you anyway. I'm going to do what I want to do. And I'm going to find some justification. Oh, I have to work because I've got so many bills. <coughs> or, I, I've got to go here and because it's my little one's baseball, softball, football, tiddlywinks, whatever. Or, i got to go over here because... And we find all this time to go hundreds and hundreds of miles in a week. But we don't have time for God. I'm not going to listen to you anyway, God. 
I don't really believe that you are the Lord of my life. Me and your buddies, right God? And I'll get back with you. Just leave a message at the tone. Beep. When I get around to it, God, I'll, I'll get around to getting to you. But you're not my first choice. You're not my second choice. I'll put you somewhere down there. I'll get you on the calendar. I'll fill you in. Ain't nothing going to happen to me. I've been doing this for years. Ain't no, nothing going to happen to me about this. I can do what I want to do. Been doing it 20 years. Been doing it 10 years. Been doing it 5 years. Look, I'm rich in myself. I've got all the things I need. I've got it going on. Nothing going to happen to me. I could list them. It would take all afternoon from the people that I've been in ministry with or I've known throughout churches and throughout my Christian life and I've seen them go the way of Nebuchadnezzar. They've said these things. They're still saying these things. And they keep saying, oh, nothing's going to happen to me. My friend, I want to tell you something today. You should never say. You should never say. Father, we come to you today. And Father, I ask you, Lord God, that you teach us through the time of Nebuchadnezzar. Father, that you would take us and let us see that Nebuchadnezzar lives the same life that we live. God, make us different. Give us such a desire to spend time with you. Give us such a desire to know your truth. Give us such a desire to honor you as Savior and Lord of our lives. Lord, I pray. If there's somebody here this morning that wants to get closer to God, Somebody this morning that wants to change their trajectory and not wind up where Nebuchadnezzar wound up. Maybe somebody this morning that needs to do something for God. You have this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Would you stand to your feet? Would you stand? You say, preacher, there's no singing. There's nobody... Up here, if God can't speak to your heart, words from, a, from music is not going to touch you. I'm going to give you an opportunity right now. We're going to bow our head. Miss Connie, you're going to play through it one more time. And in that time, we're going to let God speak. If God can't speak to your heart, nothing the pastor can say. There's nothing that the pianist can do. But if God speaks to your heart, would not today be the time that you need to listen and give God some time to honor Him? Right now, would you bow your head?